It's been a full year since I first purchased the Charboil Portable Deluxe Barbecue Grill. After all this time, how has it held up? Have any of my issues been resolved? Do I still recommend it? Does it even still work? Here's my full updated review on the Charboil Deluxe Portable Barbecue Grill. Let's dive in. Okay, it's almost barbecue season, and this grill is one of my most asked about items that I always get from you guys. So I figured it's time to do an updated review. If you haven't seen my original review of this grill, go check it out. But basically, there were some issues, but I did give you guys a detailed review. Anywhere from the build quality, to the features, to some issues that I had, and overall performance. Now originally, I thought this grill was a good value if you bought it for under $35 or $40. But there was definitely some price gouging back then, and actually there still is. Some of the issues that I had with this grill was it was poorly made or cheaply made. The regulator or or the fuel system just kept shutting off on me randomly without any warning and oftentimes I thought I was cooking when I really wasn't but it actually gets a lot worse so let's dive into the details so let me actually start with some background this grill has been used and abused I mean you can definitely see that and it's also missing the handle but we'll get to that in a second I've taken it to a lot of parks like we're out here today I've taken it camping I just basically leave it outside covered in the elements. We've cooked hamburgers, we've cooked hot dogs, grilled some steaks, some chicken, some carne asada, and it's basically performed okay. I mean, I've never really felt like it didn't have enough heat or it didn't retain heat that great. But with that being said, heat control isn't that great, but it is to be expected at this price range. Which brings me to my next segment. Let's talk about price. So currently, this is being advertised on Charboil's website for $60. I don't think it's worth $60. Actually, I don't think it's worth anywhere near $60. This grill should be sold at around 30 to 40 bucks maximum, and that's what I think you guys should pay for. Now, in my last video, a lot of you commented with some amazing deals. I think there was a guy that found it at the local Salvation Army, brand new at $10. I mean, that's a score. But the majority of you guys were able to find it at around $25 to $30 at Big Lots or other retail providers. Now, back then, there was definitely price gouging with this grill, and there still is. I can still find it at $150 to $200, which just blows my mind away. Do not pay that much for this grill. I don't know what the deal is, but there's some retail stores or online stores that do try to really upsell you this grill and it's not worth a hundred bucks, it's not worth 60 bucks. Okay, now, speaking of price, let's talk about the next big thing. Well, as you can see, there's something definitely missing from this grill, and that would be the top handle. While filming some of the B-roll for this video, the top handle completely snapped off, and I kind of expected it over the year. It has been kind of brittle. Actually, the side handles are getting pretty brittle too, so I expect them to snap off relatively soon but i wasn't doing anything extraordinary or abusing the grill in any way i literally was just lifting the lid off it wasn't locked in the position it was actually folded up and you can actually see that i got some of my b-roll footage with the handle completely intact and then a piece of it missing and then it completely snapped off I don't know exactly what happened, but I can tell you that it probably had something to do with the handle being extremely cheap plastic and it's actually threaded plastic. Naturally, it's sitting on top of here. There's heat, that heat is heating up the plastic, which is cheaply made to begin with. The handle is getting brittle and it's eventually gonna snap off. The same thing's happening to these handles and I don't wanna stress them out too much because they feel like they're gonna break as well. Okay, so I figured it wouldn't be a big deal. At the time of shooting this video, we're just under a year. So I contacted Charbroil and asked them if I could use their warranty to replace the cheap plastic handle on top and maybe even the side handles. After showing them proof of purchase, submitting my receipt, going through the registration process, the representative told me that there's only a 90 day warranty on the parts and that I would have to pay out of pocket. Well, we're definitely not dealing with Weber because Weber grills would have just replaced it at no cost. It was a bit disappointing, but I figured, hey, how much could the handle be? After checking their website, and I gotta give it to Charbroil, their website's pretty easy to navigate for spare parts or replacement parts. I found the handle, it was $3. And I also needed the hardware and the screws and the washer and such because God knows where they are now. They fell all over the ground and I couldn't find them. Well, you can't just buy the screws for the handle. You have to buy the entire hardware all over again. And that was another $3, which is fine. But shipping is another $5. So needless to say, 
you're gonna spend $15 on replacement parts for a handle that might break theoretically every year or so. And the grill oftentimes sells for under 30 bucks. So if you do the math, that's half of the grill's value on a plastic handle and some screws. We're not even talking about the side handles, just the top handle. If I wanted to replace the side handles, that would have been more. So I ended up just doing it. I just bought the handle because I want to replace the top handle of this thing and get it back into acceptable condition. And then I'm thinking about giving it to somebody else that won't abuse it, quote unquote, as much as I have, which again, I think this is basic wear and tear. So let's move on to my other issue where it just randomly shuts off. I don't know why it keeps doing that. I had a feeling it might be the regulator. I contacted customer support and their solution was to wiggle the regulator from time to time or take it out and put it back in to reset it. I explained to them that the gas is still flowing. It sounds like it just blows off and they really didn't have a solution for me. So I kind of came up with my own solution. I ended up drilling some one quarter size holes in the grill. I did two in the back and one in the front to allow some more airflow when you put the lid back on. Cause it only shuts off when you put the lid back on. And that seems to have improved things. So I really do think it's an airflow issue, but it hasn't improved it 100%. It still randomly will shut off. It's just a lot less frequent. So that continues to be an issue and Charboil doesn't really have a solution for it. Another big issue, and it's pretty common with these travel sized, you know, portable grills, although the Weber Go Anywhere, the original design, didn't have this issue. You do get a lot of flare ups. Now, again, to be fair, it's a common issue with gas grills, even with larger gas grills. Charcoal grills are a little bit easier to kind of snuff it out and, you know, prevent flare ups from getting out of control. But with gas grills, it's a bit harder. And with this grill, if you don't clean it, if you do not clean this grill, you will get a lot of flare ups and it can be very, very dangerous. So it's relatively easy to kind of, you know, manage that. Just make sure you wipe out all the grease and keep this grill relatively clean, at least on the inside. Now I know this looks bad on the outside, but on the inside, it's fairly good. I do try to clean it every other trip, depending on what I cook, obviously. I mean, if I cook something that's really fatty and I know there's a lot of piled up grease on the bottom of this thing, I'll clean it right away, but if it was just a couple of, you know, hamburgers or hot dogs and it should be relatively good, I'll clean it on the next trip. But, you know, use your judgment. It can flare up pretty bad. So today we're out here at our local park. It's a bit windy, but it's a beautiful day. And my daughter and my wife are out there playing. So we figured, hey, let's do a updated review on this grill, shoot some B-roll, grill some hamburgers and hot dogs. I don't know how I'm gonna do it without the handle. So we'll figure that out, but that's basically what we're doing today. I'm gonna cook up some hamburgers and hot dogs and hopefully we don't have any issues with this grill and hopefully I can lift the lid without burning myself. So <laughs> yeah, let's check it out. So what are my final thoughts on this grill? Okay, so the hamburgers and the hot dogs cook just fine. I mean, they're hamburgers and hot dogs. If you're gonna be cooking simple items like that, 
This grill is a no-brainer. I mean, it's gonna handle it just fine. I wouldn't cook a two-inch thick tomahawk ribeye steak on here, but you know, you guys get the point. So while I was cooking the hot dogs and the hamburgers, it was okay. However, a few times the grill did turn off on me, which kind of sucked. As far as heat control and heat retention, it was fine. But yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It's not a really good grill, to be quite honest with you guys. I think at 20 bucks or 25 bucks or even that gentleman that got it for $10, you know, that's a score, yeah, you know, get it and maybe use it for a year or two, abuse it, and then just toss it in the trash. But for me and for my purposes and what I want it for and what I need it for, a travel grill, to take camping, to take it out to the park and just kind of enjoy it and not have to baby it, this isn't the grill for me. And Charbroil doesn't really stand by this product because they should know that the plastic handle is threaded plastic and you have it on top, a heating element, which will make it brittle and crack. I think for me personally, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and fix this grill up, clean it up and give it to my mom or someone else that, you know, won't need to really use it so much or so often as, as we would like to. I think for me, I'm gonna end up getting the Weber Go Anywhere gas grill. I know, I know, I hate the redesign. I don't know why Weber messed with a product that was perfect to begin with. If there's nothing wrong with it, don't fix it but Weber did. But I figured for my purposes, the Weber grill is a lot better. It's higher quality, the top handle is welded, and the side handles are you know, secured pretty well with bolts, but my point is, the handles are superior. They're steel and they're not plastic or threaded plastic. So for me, I think the Weber Go Anywhere grill would be the right grill for me, but I still have an issue with the grates. I mean, everyone complains about the grates and I don't like that they remove the flavorizer. I have found some aftermarket grates and aftermarket flavorizers that are specifically for the Weber Go Anywhere and they're pretty high quality. The stainless steel grates are pretty thick gauged and so is the flavorizer. So it's an extra 30 bucks. I'm gonna wait until the Weber's on sale either through Amazon or Weber's website and then just make up the difference by upgrading those two items and then I think I'll have the perfect go anywhere portable grill. That's it for me guys. I hope you found this updated review informative. Check out some of my other videos and I will catch you on the next one. Take care everybody. Hey everybody. How'd you guys like that last video? Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified on my next video. And if you can, please share with your family and friends. I would really appreciate it. Here's some more content that I think you guys are really gonna enjoy. Check them out. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.